Hey guys, we're just basically continuing the theme of being very relaxed. If you can't tell, I'm in my pajama pants and potentially the most appropriate top ever made for me. Dramatic. Those of you that have been following me for the longest time, the OGs, you are most likely the ones watching this right now because this video does not have a sex title. I realized a little while ago that I'd fallen into a little bit of a rut with that because I was getting so specific about making this content that I knew people were searching for rather than making content that was organic to me. I am still gonna be talking about sex, don't worry, because you gal is horny and because... <coughs> Sorry, my girlfriend's cats are here at the moment and one of them just walked past the camera. <laughs> OG followers and people who've been following me, like not just on YouTube, but who've followed my writing and followed me on Instagram will know that I was diagnosed with BPD about six or seven years ago now. So BPD, a lot of people confuse that with bipolar, but it actually stands for borderline personality disorder. I'm not a fan of the name because when people hear it, it sounds like a villain in like a horror movie. And in fact, if you just go and type information about BPD into Google, it's all information about how people with BPD are abusive, how to survive a relationship with someone with BPD, how to recover from being with someone with BPD. That sounds pretty confronting when you first get diagnosed. I swear he wants to be in this. <laughs> I had very tumultuous relationships growing up. I never understood why relationships were so difficult for me when they seemed to be just so like fun and happy for everyone else. Do you want to be in this video or not? <laughs> for the last sort of couple of years, my BPD has been pretty well managed, but even well managed BPD, it is still, it's really hard. It's a lot of work. If you don't know much about BPD, basically there's nine traits and I believe you need to have at least four or five of the traits in order to qualify for a diagnosis. Some of the kind of main hallmark traits are an intense fear of abandonment. Of course, everyone fears getting abandoned. No one wants to be rejected, but for people with BPD, it kind of rules our entire life. And we're often looking for signs of it where they're just, it's not there. One of the, the biggest hallmark qualities is difficulty regulating emotions. Many people with BPD can experience extreme outbursts of rage. Rage is something that I suffered with a lot uh, as a teenager and throughout most of my 20s. I knew it, he does wanna be in this video. Come on, man. Someone having a rage episode might even like break things. Um, it can be very, Full on and they can feel very out of control in their anger. Another core trait of BPD is self-harm. This is something I previously used to do. I haven't done it now for two years, which is, the, it's a huge achievement for me, um, but it was something that I struggled with since I was like 13 years old as a way of coping with things that were out of my control as a child, growing up in a very scary, abusive home where I didn't know what to expect from one day to the next hurting myself was something I could control. It was a way I could express emotions that didn't feel safe to express anywhere else in my house. One of the probably most common traits is intense and unstable relationships. Because we have so much difficulty regulating our emotions, because our emotions are so intense and often so unpredictable, and we can essentially experience the entire spectrum of human emotion in the space of an hour. And because we are so sensitive and reactive to signs of abandonment that often aren't even happening, this can make having a relationship not only difficult, but really painful. Painful for the person with BPD and painful for the person in the relationship. You know, when people talk about having honeymoon periods in their relationships and, you know, the first six months, it's just like so easy and there's no arguments, like, I don't know what that's like. I could theoretically be seeing someone for months and if it's only casual and I don't have strong feelings for them, I'm fine. But as soon as I emotionally invest in someone, my BPD kicks into gear. So I will be reacting to lots of signs of abandonment, things that aren't happening, um, you know, 
breaking down crying over things like not receiving a text back or you know changed or cancelled plans all sorts of things there is this i guess stereotype and it's a very um incorrect stereotype about people with bpd that we are manipulative i disagree with this stereotype for a couple of reasons one because all of human behavior and interaction is manipulative like even the act of being kind to another person is a form of manipulation. We're being kind because we would like to receive kindness back. And things that people with BPD do can be a bit more extreme than that and so it can seem like this calculated manipulative behavior. You know, it's not uncommon at all for someone with untreated BPD to say that they want to unalive themselves because you know, they're having a fight with a partner and a partner has upset them, which seems very extreme but people with BPD experience very extreme emotion. And someone might see that as, well, that's threatening unaliving yourself to manipulate a response out of someone. But most people with BPD have very, very low impulse control. Our amygdalas don't work properly. The amygdala is something that controls emotional regulation and it controls our ability to hold on to emotional memories. So that is damaged through trauma and that's been proven through brain scans they've done of people who've been through trauma that the amygdala is damaged. Because people with BPD are so impulsive, it is kind of inaccurate to say we're manipulative because to be manipulative is quite a calculated thing. And when someone with BPD is saying, I want to unalive myself, the pain is so bad. That's not a manipulation. That's a genuine expression of how intense the emotional pain is that they're feeling. But because there is a lot of misunderstanding around BPD, we do see a lot of villains in horror movies. It's always the villain in the movie that's borderline, you know? The psychopath is borderline, they're manipulative. But actually people with BPD, because we feel our emotions so intensely, we are probably some of the most empathetic people you will ever meet. Like I was saying earlier, we love people with such incredible depth. There is no love that is quite like the love you will receive from someone with BPD because we feel love with the entire breadth of our hearts. If someone that we care about is upset or hurting, we, we physically feel that pain and we want to fix it. At its heart, BPD is a relational disorder. It's, it's one of the things that sets it out, I guess, from depression or anxiety or bipolar. When I am not in a relationship, my BPD essentially goes into remission. It almost feels like I'm cured. It's when I get into a relationship, things start to fall apart because that triggers my abandonment fears, which sets off all my intense emotions, which I have an incredible amount of difficulty regulating, can lead me to act impulsively. Another thing that people with BPD struggle with, which is very hard, I think, for people that are in relationships with us to understand is, most of us don't have emotional recall. So like I said, the amygdala manages our brain's ability to hold on to the memory of an emotion. So if you think right now about someone that you love and that you know loves you, if you really stop and think about them, you can remember that sort of warm, nice feeling of love from that person and you can know that that person loves you. Whereas someone with BPD like myself, when I cannot physically witness love like actual obvious signs of it or someone telling me i love you i am not able to hold on to it that it exists so if i'm with my partner and my partner is being affectionate i know my partner loves me but if i'm not with my partner and i don't receive let's say a reassuring message during the day saying thinking of you love you or something like that my brain is absolutely convinced that essentially like that love is gone it has disappeared i cannot recall it it is almost like it never existed and that can take a big toll on partners to constantly feel like they have to be reassuring us i do have techniques for managing and I, i'm lucky like i say i've always had really supportive reassuring partners but i do things like every time my partner has ever sent me a nice message i'll take a little screenshot of it, shot of it and i'll put it in a folder in my phone and then i can look back at that folder when I am struggling with that emotional recall and I can't remember that that love exists, I can go into that folder in my phone and look at those screenshots of those texts and be like, ah, yes, and that will just help bring back that memory. And by that same token, I could have an episode where I'm completely in a dark space of wanting to unalive myself and it is like the world is ending and I don't see any point going on. An hour later, I can be on top of the world. And if you've seen me, 
wanting to unalive myself and then an hour later you've seen me being on top of the world it can be very confusing you'll be like how could you just be so happy right now it's because i don't remember that feeling of being in that really dark place even though that was just an hour ago it has been wiped from my brain my brain can only hold the emotion that i'm physically in so i have to use lots of techniques all day every day to basically train my brain to do things that I think most people just take for granted. Like knowing that people in your life care about you, being able to hold on to emotions, being able to regulate your emotions, like being able to get upset or irritated and not have a huge outburst. That could be, you know, relationship destroying. So I've done a really lot of work on my BPD and I'm really proud of how far I've come. Like I say, it's been two years since I've self-harmed. Um, I, rarely have rage episodes these days it's not to say i don't have them but they're very rare whereas they used to at one point be a big part of my life i am not emotionally abusive to my partners which is something that i unfortunately did do before i realized i had bpd because another part of bpd is paranoia and people with bpd will get this intense sort of paranoid ideation where if someone has been mean to us we our brain will just categorize them as all bad we can't see the nuance that most people can see most people can see that person is acting like a dick and they're not a terrible person they're just acting like a dick right now whereas someone with bpd because it's harder for us to experience that nuanced area because we are so in the extremes with everything we will not only think that person is a wholly bad person, but we'll become intensely paranoid that that person is out to get us. In my earlier relationships, if a partner was ever snappy at me, or maybe they were just in a bad mood and maybe had been a little bit sort of said something a bit inconsiderate to me, it was not unusual at all for me to say very cruel, nasty, horrible things to them. Because in my mind, in that moment, they were out to get me they were the enemy my mind would go into that place my mind still gets triggered into that place today it's not something that i can control it will always be there because of the bpd but because i've done so many years of treatment now and also uh definitely also it helps because i'm on medication i can challenge that thought i have skills that i can use to help to bring myself a little bit more into the gray area but all of that said i don't always get it right and sometimes just a partner being in an angry mood around me will make me think that they don't care about me, they don't want the relationship, they're trying to destroy the relationship. Um, it can be really exhausting and I think that's something that a lot of people don't understand is just the mental toll that it takes to manage a mental illness. When you are actively committed to recovery, especially with something like BPD, you are working on it every single day and not just every day but often every minute of every hour of every day certainly when i'm in a relationship if i want any chance of having a healthy relationship i have to be doing it all day every day using my skills and sometimes i get tired and so i slip up and i recently had a fairly big slip up where i did have a bpd episode the way it manifested i was at a friend's house and my friend didn't know what to do so they called the ambulance and at least in australia uh if you call the ambulance and they feel that you are at risk of harming yourself or someone else they will also send the police so the police and the ambulance showed up which wasn't the most pleasant thing i was not in my normal headspace like i am now i was in basically what I would consider to be a form of psychosis. It is very much like a psychotic episode. That is how I would describe it. I was in a place where I was definitely having strong thoughts of unaliving. And that's something that I haven't had in a really long time. It was bad enough that I had to be restrained by police and injected with a tranquilizer by um, a paramedic. And I spent the night in the psych unit, which it's not a very nice place to be. I spent a lot of time in and out of the psych unit in my 20s and even a little in my early 30s when before I was diagnosed and then when I was first learning about BPD and how to use my skills. And then over the last um, couple of years, things have improved and I haven't 
haven't been hospitalized I've been largely on top of it and so it is disappointing that I went back there but my therapist reminded me that when you're making a lot of progress sometimes at some point you're going to take 10 steps backwards progress isn't linear we always want it to just like look like this but it tends to more look like this <laughs> so yeah rather than punishing myself for it which is something I used to do a lot and that punish punishing of myself would lead to a lot of shame and having that shame would lead me to just keep repeating the bad behaviors now what I try to do is just use it as a learning experience I put steps into place to prevent it happening again for example at the moment I'm going sober for a little bit I don't personally have a problem with alcohol but alcohol is something that can affect your mood and obviously as someone who has difficulty managing my moods having had a bad episode recently a bit of a setback I don't want to throw anything else into the mix that could affect my moods while I'm just trying to like really get back on top of things so I'm staying abstaining from that for a little while and like I say I'm very blessed to have an incredible support network I've got so many amazing friends who stuck by me I have so much to live for and I love my life and I love my career and I love this job and I love having this platform and even just the opportunity to switch things up a bit and talk about some other things to let you guys get to know me better and talk about stuff that I'm passionate about because this is kind of the uglier side of mental illness and I feel like we only really talk about like the more glamorized sides of it like there's certain like depression and anxiety are seen as a bit more sort of almost acceptable now they're a bit more normalized but borderline personality disorder there's a lot more ugly aspects to it that people don't want to talk about and I think it's important that we do talk about it because there are plenty of people out there who have BPD that are feeling very alone and very broken and who don't know what to do. I hope some of you at least find this video and realize that you are not alone and you are not broken. Your brain is just responding to trauma that you have been through. I look back on my slip ups and the ways that I acted in the past now as me doing the best I could at the time with the tools I had of which were not very many. And now I have a lot more tools and so I try to use them as much as I can. Doesn't mean I won't slip up from time to time, but I pick myself up and I keep learning. Because I know um, some people are gonna ask, the treatment that I do and the treatment that has really helped me is something called DBT, which stands for Dialectical Behavior Therapy. It's pretty much seen as like the gold standard treatment for people with BPD. It has been really life-changing for me. I did an outpatient program where I checked into a hospital one day a week, every week for a year, and um, it was basically a group program where I did it with other people who have BPD. Ever since then, I've continued to work with a therapist who specializes in DBT. If you have more questions about BPD or if you'd just like to hear more about it, let me know. I know this video is going to get abysmal views and I know that moving forward I'm going to lose probably a lot of views as I continue to make more videos where I'm not doing those super searchable sex topics but I want to start bringing more of myself to the table. I hope you'll come along for the journey and for those of you that are still here listening, thank you. You are, you are the reason I'm here. You are the OG and if you would like to support me to keep doing the work that I do because while I'm not getting as many views I'm not really making money here on YouTube you can subscribe to my patreon you can subscribe to my patreon from as little as like a couple of dollars a month and when a whole bunch of you do that that actually helps to support me as a creator to keep doing this as a full-time Job. the link to my patreon below this video if you want to join when you join my patreon by the way you will get access to stacks of exclusive content I've got tons of sex education content on there that I do not share anywhere else online I'm going to have a nap now because I'm very tired it's been a long week but I'm looking forward to seeing you all in the next video and I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts on this new direction for the channel let me know in the comment section below and I'll see you all in the next video Mwah. time to get up now